Hi Gemini, welcome to January 2020. This is Teresa from Tara by T. And before I start your reading, I want to call in some good energy. So this month, Happy New Year. Welcome to a new decade. Let's see what's happening for Gemini um, in the month of January. We have a full moon in Cancer on the 10th. Uranus goes direct in Taurus on the 11th, and then we have that Saturn and Pluto conjunction in Capricorn on the 12th. Then we have a new moon in Aquarius on the 24th, which is favorable to your sign. So it's going to be an action-packed month. So let's see. I'll get into the astrology later. Let's just see what the cards say for Gemini in terms of love and relationships. What does Gemini need to know? about January 2020 in terms of love and relationships. What does Gemini need to know? Let's see what we get. The Page of Pentacles. The Ace of Swords, the Hermit, the Knight of Cups, the Temperance, the Strength card, the Five of Cups, the Nine of Cups, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Queen of Cups. Hmm. Okay, so you're starting the month out with the Page of Pentacles. This, this is the card of the student. So some of you might be open to learning new skills. Some of you might be connecting with someone. If, if you're starting a relationship, this could be a child. I mean, for some people, the pages can be a children. So you could have like a child that's going to school or something around children. If it's a relationship, if it's not a child, then it, the pages are usually messages, messengers. Um, in a relationship, and sometimes if you get a page, uh, it means you're at the beginning stages of a relationship. So you're open to, you might be open, if you're not in a relationship in January, you're open to starting a new one. And you could be connecting with an earth sign or even a water sign. Um, so you're at the beginning stages and you're kind of open. You come into January open, you're ready for a new experience and you're ready to learn. Some of you might be even learning new skills with the Page of Pentacles because it still has the, the card of this, that student energy, but it also has the, the energy of like a beginning stage. You know, you're at the beginning, you're just kind of branching out and you have the Ace of Swords here. This is a card of... Um, a new beginning in your in your thoughts and the way you're thinking about relationships. So you're you're viewing relationships from a different um, perspective. You're ready to take action, as a matter of fact, because you have the Ace of Swords is the warrior energy. You've been activated. You're ready to. Uh, your passion has been activated, and you're ready to take action. Um, and you're also having a different, um, your thoughts are changing around relationships and you're, I think you're more open to the new. You've been doing a lot of soul searching in the past with the hermit, um, trying to figure out what is right for you. What do you really need in a relationship? You may have suffered the breakup of a relationship because you have the five of cups here. So you're reviewing your life and reviewing your losses. And in some cases you might be stuck in the past, considering, you know, focusing on what you've lost and not seeing what you still have that you ha can build on. But in any case, you are evaluating things. You have been, in the past, you've been kind of the hermit. You know, you've been kind of taking time out to think, to meditate, to even ask people for advice. Um, not sure how, which way to go forward. So maybe you're just coming out of a, a breakup. And I think in January, you're more open to 
uh, meeting new people and maybe forming new relationships. The Knight of Cups um, energy, this is like a, a romantic offer or proposal. So you, you could have someone already in mind that you're thinking of connecting with. Maybe someone has approached you and invited you. Maybe you've gotten an invitation because the Knight of Cups is a, a, a proposal, a romantic invitation with someone who could be very artistic, very creative, uh, maybe a little bit immature. The Knight of Cups energy is a little immature. Uh, so it could be someone younger than you. And so I feel like you've already got something in mind coming into January. And with the Temperance card here, there could be some strong compatibility. Even though this person might be very different from you, there is a sense of compatibility, but you have to kind of meet each other in the middle. Because the Temperance card is about a blending of opposites. Learning how to um, bring both of your energies together so that like you're, you know, the, so that the two people together are more than the sum of the parts. So you're, you're, when you're bringing, like, Whatever you can do on your own, you can do so much better together. So this is like a card of partnership, working together, compromising, creating a win-win, learning how to see things from another person's perspective, being open to different ideas, different perspectives. Um, the temperance card is also finding like a balance point. So maybe you need to find a work-life balance or you may need to... Um, make some sacrifices to be in a relationship with this person. But basically the temperance card is compatibility. I don't I don't see a problem um, with the compatibility, but you do have to, there's like an equal give and take or more of a balanced give and take in this relationship. Now in the past, you may have felt like you were all alone in the world and you had no one that could help you out of a jam um, but I think that's changing now and in the past sometimes the Knight of Cups can represent someone who has unrealistic views about relationship like you're looking for this so if you've been looking for this like perfect partner or dream lover I think you're taking more of a realistic view coming into this new year and new month um, and you're letting that go you're letting go like you might have um, been a little bit too naive in relationships in the past or, um, you know, you meet someone and you're like uh, very idealistic at the beginning, not really looking deeper to see what whether this person has any substance or expecting um, unrealistic, having unrealistic expectations. But I think that that's changing. That has um that energy is fading. And I think you're more willing to compromise because of some of the things you've gone through. Especially because you have this Five of Cups. There's a sense of regret um, over the past. Maybe you're regretting certain decisions you made in the past um, and wishing that you had handled things a little bit differently. Some of you might be struggling with some type of, um, the strength card is about controlling your emotions. It's about learning how to um, deal with turbulent feelings and emotions, including anger. Learning how to deal with anger, learning how to express anger, learning how to get your needs met without flipping, without going, you know, ballistic. So it, you could have either been dealing with someone like this that had some kind of anger issue someone who needs counseling to deal with those emotions or you could be dealing with it within yourself where your emotions are going like high uh, are all over the place highs and lows and you know one minute you're calm next minute you're blowing up at somebody um, this could be an issue that you still might deal with in January but you could also be helping this is a card of taming the beast within uh, so for some of you, you're learning how to, you're learning self-control. You're learning how to deal with your emotional 
uh, fluctuations. Let's put it that way. Learning to find the middle ground, not to be, not to go to extremes in reaction. Um, either way, either very too ecstatic or too depressive. You know, you're kind of like finding that middle sweet spot and learning how to more self-control. So if you've had like some volatile exchanges with someone, things are kind of, you're learning how to, you know, not react, not overreact to things in relationships. And you could also be helping someone through a difficult time, someone who's been wounded. Uh, if you're not the one who's been struggling, you could be helping someone who is struggling with these issues and learning how to um, help them find a balance. Because this is also the card of counseling. So in some cases, if you're... So if, for those of you who are not in a relationship, there could be some new... Um, beginnings happening but for those who are in a relationship you may be deciding to work on that relationship and to bring greater balance you know if things have gotten um unbalanced like if one of you if you've gotten into like these emotional scenes or screaming matches or you know where you're always angry or you're reacting uh, you might decide to go for counseling to help save the relationship. And with the, the Five of Cups here, you can save it because there are two cups here. This does not mean um, that the relationship... You know, you might be having some issues in a relationship, but it's not something that you can't fix through counseling. Because you have these two cards which represent seeking advice, counseling, learning how to... Um, going... Like with the Hermit, that's a card of... Seeking wisdom, seeking guidance, seeking advice, and the strain card is, you know, going for counseling to help you deal with any emotional problems within a relationship where you have a tendency to overreact or not express yourself in a healthy way. So, um, for, for those who have already left a relationship, it could be a new relationship. For those who are in a relationship that's struggling, there's hope through counseling. And you have the Nine of Cups here. This is a wish fulfillment card. So if you're having any issues, you can resolve them in January because you're determined to take action and you're determined to make things better. So whether that means you're going to reach out for something, you're open to something new. Um, if you're not in a committed relationship, and you're more open to connecting with someone, or whether that means you're you're more open to saving an existing relationship by going through counseling and discussing things and getting on a new path, and you can achieve um, you can achieve that goal. Um, the Nine of Pentacles. This is more about someone who's been alone, if. For those of you who are not in a relationship, you might have been focused on financial security, trying to, you know, make more money to get yourself in a place where you feel safe and secure, you know, building a home, having a home base. Um, the Nine of Pentacles, you, you're working in a job where you could be in, in a managerial position where you're in charge and you have a lot of freedom in your, in your career or in your job. Um, but you're, you're also, you've been, some of you have been feeling lonely. Like it's not enough to have financial security. It's not enough to have a nice home. I want to have someone I want to share my life with. So you're starting to think. So for those of you who haven't been in a relationship or have um, been a while, alone for a while, you're starting to, you're, you're wanting to connect with someone. And you can have that. You have the Nine of Cups here. Um... You could actually meet someone through your environment, through your day-to-day -day, um, environment. You know, people that you work with, people that you deal with on a daily basis, uh, running around town. And here's the Queen of Cups. So this is a card of someone that you could be connecting with, could be important to you. This person could be very intuitive, very spiritual. Um, very sensitive, very artistic, um, very compassionate. So that could describe someone you might be connecting with in January. 
Um, and you may feel that you have some type of karmic connection with this person. So either you feel very comfortable with them, as if you've known them for a long time, even if you've just met, or you feel like um, there's just a, a some type of a special connection that you want to pursue. So for those who are starting on a new relationship, you could be meeting someone who's very... Um, it could be a water sign, but it could also be someone who's just very, very sensitive, very caring, very intuitive, very spiritual. And um, you're at the beginning stages. You're just, you kind of open and just let's see where it goes. But you're open to learning and new things and you're open to experiencing new things. So... Um, you're ready for whatever life throws at you. And this could be a healing time also. Time when you, you do a lot of personal healing. So let's see through relationship. Let's see what the um, astrology has to say for Gemini. So the moon, the full moon falls in your second house. And it's opposed by all these planets. The sun, Mercury, Saturn, and Pluto in your eighth house. This is the money house. So you could be focused on financial, something financial involving finances is coming to completion around the full moon. You're seeing the truth um, about a partner's income because um, the eighth house relates to the money that you get from other people. So it could be taxes, it could be an insurance payout, it'd be a settlement, it could be your partner's earnings if you're married or in a relationship where you're sharing finances. Um, it could even be, you know, winning some kind of money from, you know, being some kind of loan. So you're seeing the truth. If you're, if you're looking for financial support, it may be hard to come by um, this month because of all this Capricorn energy going through your eighth house. Saturn and Pluto are coming together. Um, in your 8th house on the 12th. And this is right after this January 10th full moon. So something, you're, you're seeing the truth about your financial situation. And it may or may not be, you could even be signing a contract if you're looking for some kind of financial support because Mercury is there. The institutions you're dealing with are going to be very... Um, they, they're going to be a little bit difficult. They're going to demand a lot from you. So it's not going to be money that you get easily. It's going to be money you have to really work for. So they might be demanding a lot of paperwork or they might be demanding a lot of proof of this or that. Um, so for some of you finishing up some kind of financial dealing, you may feel um, that things are a little bit harsh when it comes to finances. Or you're realizing you know what, I've got to seriously look at my finances and make some changes. I, you know, and especially with the moon in Cancer in the second house, um, your financial situation might have been, uh, might be unstable right now. Or you might be feeling a little bit insecure about your earning ability. And you really have to think about what you need to support yourself financially. And how to think uh, more positively about yourself feel like because the second house is also self-esteem how you know because what you think your worth is what you wind up earning in the world and also the se second house is your values your values are changing so if you focus mostly on the external things you know material things now suddenly you might be feeling you know what money isn't everything I want family I want to feel nurtured, I want to feel loved and supported. I want someone who makes me feel good about me. Uh, it's not so much how much money this partner is bringing in to my life. You know, I want more of a nurturing relationship. So those could be some of the issues. You have Mars going through the seventh house, so that's stirring up some, you might be arguing over things. Mars is putting the focus, your energy is on relationships. So that could be that if you're not in a relationship, you're going to put a lot of energy trying to find one. If you are in a relationship, you might be arguing over um, finances. 
Uranus is in your 12th house. It's time to clear out some of that psychological baggage. When, when planets are going through the 12th house, so things might just pop up suddenly that, it, you know, the 12th house is the house of the unconscious, psychological, it's, it's the hidden house. So there could be unexpected things that come to light at this full moon um, that affect you on a psychological level. Maybe you start, you're starting to realize how you're holding yourself back or how you've been sabotaging yourself in certain ways. And it's time to release. Now Uranus is trining Jupiter. Jupiter is in your 8th house also. So even though there's all this heavy Saturn energy or Capricorn energy in your 8th house, it's really helping you. It's really your friend. It's helping you to see the truth to make, to see uh, reality and stop kidding yourself and to get, um, to get out of a jam and to start creating a practical plan. And Jupiter comes along as a ray of hope. So if you feel like things have been really heavy around money, Jupiter will bring opportunity. But you will still have to do something. You'll have to take action. You'll have to do the work. You'll have to make changes in your financial situation. Because Jupiter is conjunct the south node, and this is in your eighth house. So whatever you've been doing in the past, it's just not working anymore. The old systems, you know, things that you might have done to bring in more money are just not working. So you have to make changes. You have to think outside the box. And maybe you've just been worried about status or, you know, I just want to make, I want a job that pays a lot. And now you're, you're changing. Your values are changing. You might feel like, you know, I want something that I really feel... Uh, or I want a relationship, it's not just about the money. Like you might have been attracted to people because they made money. Uh, now you're just wanting the relationship. You want something that has value. It's not so much about what you can get from that person or what that person brings to the table. It's more about, you know, do I feel nurtured around this person? Do I feel supported? Do I feel loved? So you have an opportunity for changes. Part of the issue, you may have to release some things um, that have been holding you back, past patterns that are no longer working, that may have come down, handed down to you from parental figures in your life. Maybe you know you have parents that, that instilled a certain mindset within you about financial responsibility, and you're having to challenge that now and release it. Um, another way that this could play out with the Saturn-Pluto conjunction is there may be some power struggles around money. You might be dealing with powerful organizations that are wielding their power. Like, if you don't pay, this is going to happen. Or, you know, or if you want this, then you have to do that. You know, there could be manipulations. So a partner might be trying to manipulate you with money, through money. Uh, these are all the things that could happen. Or you may just feel like you're fighting, you're trying to fight City Hall kind of thing, you know, where... The government is coming in and saying, nope, these are the rules, you have to deal with this. So you're, you're learning some lessons and you're changing. It's calling on you to, to, take a, to, to assess your life and where you are financially. What is it that you value? Where are you putting your energy? Uh, especially in relationships. Um, and how you can make changes so that you can move forward with a better plan, a more realistic plan. Now, the good thing is we have this new moon coming in Aquarius on January 24th. And that's going to be in your ninth house. So that is, you could decide to travel. You could be connecting with people from a distance and from foreign countries. You could be going back to school, either teaching or learning new skills, um, you're changing your thinking and it's going to also change some of the baggage you've been carrying around. So again, the counseling aspect comes up. It would be a good time if you ever wanted to go through some type of counseling program, um, this would be a good time to do it, to get at those, to, to, make, to help you see things in a more realistic way, to help you remove and free yourself from some blockages. Um, Venus and Neptune now, at this new moon are going to be conjunct in the 10th house. That could be very positive in terms of career and also love. You could meet someone on the job that you're really connecting with, that you feel um, could be a potential soulmate. 
You could be doing work that you really love because Venus in the 10th house, um, you might be doing something really creative or something that really helps others because Neptune is there. So you might be working on a project that really helps those that are less, uh, that are disadvantaged and you're feeling, uh, it, it's like a spiritual mission. Jupiter in your eighth is going to only bring abundance and opportunity. Um, and Mercury is in the ninth house. So you're communicating. You might be working on some type of website project or communications project. Or you're communicating your own message to the world. Maybe you have some wisdom that you want to share and teach. And you might be uh, involved in something that involves teaching or higher education. Because the ninth house rules higher education, spirituality, um, what your belief system, <coughs> and also long distance travel. So you might be doing a lot of traveling. You have an opportunity to travel. Maybe to deal with um, someone from a distance. Maybe there might be, if there's a new relationship, it could be someone that you meet online or someone who lives at a distance or someone who's from a different culture than you. So there are some, there is a ray of hope after all this heavy Capricorn energy. And Uranus, let's see, where does Uranus in your house right now? Uranus in the 12th house is about, it, it goes direct on the 11th. So if you've had anything that's been blocking you, Uranus is, is here to free you from any kind of karmic debt or any kind of psychological blocks. It's time to like face them and release them. Uranus is bringing them out. It might be kind of shocking when you see the truth, but once you see the truth, you can release it. So you have to bring it to the surface, see the truth, and let it go. And Uranus is going to free you from all those past, the, the past baggage that you've been carrying. And so if you felt stuck in a way, that, like you haven't been making progress, and you feel like um, you've just been kind of treading water on some kind of psychological issue, Uranus can bring uh, a breakthrough or a, uh, an awakening that helps you to make progress and to move forward and so that you can achieve your goals. Because you have this Nine of Cups here. This Nine of Cups energy is the Wish Fulfillment card. So if you're looking for love in January, the potential is there. Um... You just have to look at where have I been blocking my chances for connecting with someone? Where have I been blocking, you know, my, uh, you know, maybe have a fear of intimacy or fear of being overwhelmed in a relationship. So you have to work on those things. Work on your fears. Work on, you know, patterns that are um, not in your best interest. So anything that needs to be released and let go of, anything that's not working, let it go. That's what this all this Capricorn energy is. And the Saturn conjunct Pluto, it's, it's time for major change. It's time to release what's no longer working. It's time to get, give up old patterns that have no meaning anymore and that are holding you back. Because Saturn energy is about restriction, you know, uh, where you feel limited or blocked. It's time to break free. Break free. And to change. Pluto uh, represents transformation. Something that's been building up for a long time. And you've been dealing with it or not dealing with it. More likely, uh, you've been struggling for a long time. Not willing to face the truth. Now it's like the truth is in your face. You can't deny it anymore. You have to make changes. And that's what this energy is all about. But then you also have Jupiter. You know, Saturn and Pluto are the heavy hitters of the Zodiac. And um, some people experience them as difficulty or, um, you know, hardship because Saturn demands work. It demands you to, you know, really do what you need to do. You can't avoid responsibility. You can't avoid the work. And Pluto wants you to change. Pluto wants you to be living your best life. And if whatever you're doing is not what you're meant to be doing, Pluto will destroy it so that you could rebuild in a better direction. This is really a very powerful time for everyone. Um, so take advantage of this opportunity to make real change in your life and to get 
whatever you're seeking, you have the ability to achieve it. So this is my reading for the month of January 2020. Um, I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it's been a help to you. And I want to say if you want a private reading that's, that focuses on your specific inf uh, situation, just click on the link in the description box and we can get you on the schedule in the meantime. Um, hold on to your hope in January, Gemini. And thank you. I want to say thank you also for those who have um, been supporting my channel, either through liking, subscribing, commenting, those who have ordered readings. I appreciate you all. I love you all. And I wish only the best for you in the coming year. May it be filled with love, success, and abundance. So um, I hope you enjoyed this reading, and I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.